Councillor Cordova. Thanks very much, Mayor. Um, my first question is, has, have we engaged or will we be engaging uh, before presenting the submission with uh, experts in the field, for example, Professor David Bowman from the University of Tasmania? Mr Smee. Uh, through you, Mayor, we will endeavour to engage with experts as necessary to compile our response within the time frame that's available. Thanks very much. So, m for my two cents on this, um, I have been in communication with people like Peter Robertson and Owen Price, these are bushfire experts who recognise that ultimately as a result of anthropogenic climate change, as the, the um, exposure draft here, the explanatory paper uh, expresses, we are seeing more and more extreme bushfire events. And so it's going to be very important that we um, reflect uh, a scientific evidence-based data-driven approach and that we recognise that, for example, Chris Taylor and David Lindemeyer, two researchers, um, have done extensive uh, reports on the links between, for example, forestry and fire and fire intensity and also the effects of climate change on increasing bushfire severity. As a result of that, we can't just do a piecemeal approach and we actually need to use the data and the evidence. And so from the Emergency Leaders for Climate Action 2020, their recommendations were to set up immediately a National Climate Disaster Fund to meet climate fueled disaster costs and build resilience, paid through a fossil fuel producer levy, develop and implement a na national climate change health and wellbeing strategy, and finally tackle climate change and worsening extreme weather by urgently phasing out fossil fuels. And I'm not saying that we can do that here on the council on our own, but I think in our submission, we need to reflect that urgency. I also think that we need to be working with nature organisations, traditional owners, scientists and landowners and managers to restore ecosystem health, resilience and natural fire retardant attributes. That includes canopy and moisture retention. It includes improving provision for having digging animals and fungi that actually reduce fire risk. And it includes protecting fire sensitive ecological communities and species. So I would like to see some of this evidence um, and some of this um, approach, uh, recognising the effects of climate change within our submission. I also want to point out that, for example, when we do hazard reduction burns on Bruni, and then we get three days of warnings that for anybody with asthma they should go inside, um, we realise, as Councillor Fox alluded to, that actually we're reducing a lot of carbon emissions while we're, while we're burning, but we're also providing a hazard for people who have respiratory issues already. So. For those three days where people should go inside, if you calculate the size of the summer bushfires last year, um, it was an area the size of Kenya that burnt in these national crises. Now, to, to hazard reduction burn an area that size, we'd need to burn consecutively for about 11 years. So there's no way that simply by a hazard reduction burn approach we can achieve what we're trying to achieve, which is resilience, bushfire readiness and climate action. So I just want to point out what the experts talk about when they say our short-term focus should be um, shifting the focus away from large-scale prescribed burning to a combination of localised science-based hazard reduction and risk minimisation plans and a nationwide investment in early detection and rapid suppression, which they refer to as at-source suppression and ignition management. So an example that they use is in November 2015, the Cascade Fire near Esperance on the southwest of WA. It smouldered for two days. It could have been put out by a single volunteer brigade using hoses, but because agencies wouldn't send on-ground teams or, or fire bombers, it then took off for three days it smouldered and then it ended up getting out of control and it burnt approximately 120,000 hectares of bush and farmland and it killed four people. So that's why it is so crucial that we need to be looking a shift away from large-scale hazard reduction prescribed burns and towards nationwide investment in early detection and rapid suppression. So I would like to see some of those uh, issues reflected in our submission, particularly localised science-based hazard reduction and risk minimisation plans, and working with nature organisation, traditional owners, scientists and landowners and management managers to restore our ecosystem health, resilience and natural fire retardant attributes. Thank you.